Hi folks, today we are going to have a look at woods in this lesson. Now, although this lesson is titled here uh, as an S1 craft lesson, although we've taken it from our S1 course, uh, this video lesson is going to be suitable for all BGE levels, so S1 through to S3, as well as practical woodworking and design and manufacture. Um, so, very simple, we'll start with the basics. Where does wood come from? Uh, hopefully we would know this, that there are two main categories of natural timbers. We've got hardwoods and we've got softwoods. Okay, Our third category of wood is manufactured boards. Okay, So they're man-made and they're made up from the sort of waste material of natural timbers. So hardwoods and softwoods uh, are grown naturally as trees and manufactured boards are made from the waste products of natural timbers. Um, and we'll look at those in a bit more detail later on. Uh, so it's like we said, it's a natural material. We know it comes from trees. Uh, each piece is unique. Uh, there are fine lines in natural timber. We can see here in this image. Okay, and these fine lines are called the grain. Now, if you've ever looked at uh, a tree stump or a log that's been cut through, and you'd see the rings of a tree, and you'd be able to look at the rings to tell how old the tree was. These are the lines that run down from those rings. Okay, and they give you an indication. Um, as the age of material. What we are interested in when we're in the workshop, uh, when we see the grain of the timber, is which direction we should sand the timber. Okay, so when we see the grain running along the timber, we know that that's the direction that we should be sanding uh, to get a nice smooth finish on our piece of timber. If you sand across the grain, you end up scratching the surface of the timber uh, and it ruins your finish. You get a quite a rough surface rather than a smooth surface that you're looking for. So the key is to follow the grain, to follow the lines that you see uh, in these natural pieces of timber when we're working with hardwoods or softwoods. Something else we might see uh, when working with natural timbers are knots. Okay, we can see one here. I'm circling it here on screen. Uh, and these are darker circles in the timber uh, and they indicate where a branch one screw on the tree. Uh, now they tend to be very hard uh, knots, okay, they're fairly solid, um, and when we come to try to cut through them, uh, particularly if we're trying to cut a joint uh, in that particular location, they can be very difficult to work with. Um, so we try to avoid working with knots where we can, uh, although they do add an aesthetic appeal to the wood. Uh, obviously, they, they help the wood to, to look nice and in some high-end furniture uh, that is you know, desired by some people, they, they like the look of that. Uh, but for us in the workshop, we try to avoid it because they tend to be a bit more difficult to work with. Uh, there's a video here, which I'm not going to play, um, but if you go onto the the website, into the department website and find this PowerPoint, you'll be able to watch this video and it's a, a brief overview of uh, what happens to the trees when they're brought to a lumber mill. But we're going to skip through this just now onto the next slide. So our first category of natural timbers are hardwoods, okay, uh, and they usually come from deciduous trees, so trees with leaves, okay, as opposed to needles. Uh, deciduous trees are trees that lose their leaves uh, in the winter months and the colder months, so uh, as we come into autumn you see obviously the leaves change colour to yellow and brown and red, and then in the winter uh, they'll tend to lose their leaves, and those sort of trees are deciduous trees and they tend to be hardwood trees. Uh, they're not all hard in terms of uh, their physical properties. Uh, balsa is a hardwood, uh, very popular uh, with model making. So those of us in design and manufacture might be familiar with using balsa uh, for making models. And that is a very, very light wood. It's very, very lightweight. So although it comes from a hardwood tree, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the timber itself is uh, physically hard. Uh, they're slower to grow than softwood trees, so that makes them generally more durable, uh, but also more expensive. So when we're working with hardwoods, and we'll look at some examples of hardwoods in a second, they tend to be more expensive because they take uh, a longer time to grow. So we've got a table here of examples of hardwoods, and we're going to run through these just now. Uh, these are the ones that we most, com most commonly come across uh, in the workshop and uh, when we're working. In design and manufacture or practical woodwork. Uh, so our first uh, hardwood is oak, one that we're probably all familiar with. Um, it's a very strong and tough durable wood, um, but 
because of that, it makes it difficult to work with. Okay, it can be quite difficult uh, when we're trying to saw through it and cut joints and various things like that. Um, it's an open grain wood, so what that means is the, the distance between the grain, the distance between those lines that we looked at in the previous slide, uh, can be quite wide, it can be quite a large gap. Um, it tends to have a, an expensive look, which is why lots of furniture um, tends to be made from oak. It looks very good. Um, you can see a little example here. Uh, that's generally what oak is used for. Uh, another, <coughs> excuse me, another hardwood that we'll come across is beech. Okay, it's a very strong and durable hardwood. Again, similar to oak. Uh, the difference here that this one is much easier to work with. Okay, it tends to be easier for us to manipulate this when we come to it with a saw or a chisel. It's pale brown in colour and there are sort of distinctive flecks in the grain, so little marks, not knots, uh, but darker sort of spots in the grain um, that give it away that it is beech. And we'll be most familiar with this as the material that's used for our bench tops in the workshop and the tools that we use in the workshop, such as the mallet. Um, often the handles of chisels and saws are also made from beech due to its strong and durable nature. Uh, as I touched on previously uh, in the last slide, balsa is a hardwood, uh, but again, it's a very lightweight hardwood. Okay, it's soft and buoyant, which means it will float uh, in water. Very pale, as you can see here in the picture. Uh, feels very smooth to the touch. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, it's used for model making uh, due to its lightweight and easy to work nature. Mahogany is another one that we might use in the workshop, or uh, Maranti is more commonly what we will find in the workshop, which is very similar in its appearance and its properties to mahogany, uh, but it's slightly cheaper. Uh, Maranti is sometimes referred to as Chinese mahogany or Philippine mahogany, um, but they're very, very similar to uh, mahogany and Maranti. Uh, it's relatively strong, it's relatively easy to work with, uh, for those in first year, uh, or for those who have come through the first year course recently, uh, we started making the S1 boat project uh, with Maranti. So you might be familiar with using it there. Uh, and it finishes very well. It comes to a very high quality finish when we apply oils and varnishes to it, as you can see here. And because of that, it tends to be used in sort of more expensive furniture making, such as tables, uh, chairs and that kind of thing. It's got the light red to spring colour. Uh, it's quite close and even grain, and it's got a good surface texture. And finally, we have walnut, uh, which again is a very strong and tough hardwood, uh, and is also quite difficult to work with. Because it's difficult to work with, it tends to lead to expensive furniture, because the work that's required to produce items out of walnut, obviously it takes more time, and therefore the expense of uh, the nature of the furniture that's made it tends to be more expensive. It's a dark brown uh, wood uh, with an open wavy grain and it tends to look expensive. Okay, It has a high quality aesthetic uh, which some people are looking for in their furniture. Now these are not, uh, this is not a list of every hardwood. Uh, okay, obviously there are lots and lots more uh, but these are the ones that we are most commonly going to come across uh, in school, in our work, in either practical woodwork or design and manufacture. Our second category of natural timbers is softwoods, okay, and kind of in the opposite way to hardwoods, they tend to come from coniferous trees, okay, so trees with needles and cones. Uh, coniferous trees are sometimes called evergreens, uh, they don't lose their leaves in winter, so their leaves are more needle-like uh, and they don't tend to lose them in winter, so you're thinking about uh, your Christmas trees, for example, uh, that would be a good example of a softwood tree um, because they don't lose their, their needles, they don't lose their leaves in winter. They are quicker to grow than hardwoods, so it generally makes them less expensive, they're generally cheaper because they're quicker to grow. It's important to note that because they're quicker doesn't mean they're quick. Um, when we talk about a softwood tree, we're maybe talking about 20 years maybe for it to grow um, to its total height, um, which is certainly quicker than a hardwood tree, uh, but not that quick so it's just something to bear in mind uh, but it does tend to make them a lot cheaper than hardwood trees uh, they are d good for sustainable forestry uh, because they grow faster than other trees um, so they can be cut down and replanted very easily 
um, which is obviously good for the environment, and um, which makes softwood IDs, softwood trees, excuse me, suitable for sustainable forestry. 80% of woods used in the world tend to be softwoods, okay, because they're so readily available, because they are quick and easy to grow, uh, most products that you'll find made with natural timbers tend to use softwoods because they're so uh, easy to access. Again, we'll look at a table here of some examples of softwoods. Uh, and as I said previously in the hardwoods table, this is not every softwood in the world, uh, but it's the ones that we are most commonly going to come across. Uh, so we'll start with red pine, uh, and this is the timber that most of us will use uh, in the majority of the projects that we will do in the workshop. Okay, red pine is the one that we tend to use uh, for most of our workshop activities. Um, and that's mainly due to the fact that it's easy to work with. Okay, so hardwoods are easy to work with, softwoods are easy to work with, uh, but these tend to be less expensive, which is why we tend to opt for them in the workshop. Uh, they're strong and straight grained, uh, red pine that is, and it tends to have fewer knots. Okay, and if you remember back to what I was saying earlier, knots can be very difficult to work with. Um, so the fact that red pine has fewer knots means it's easier for us to use in the workshop. Uh, it's pink to reddish uh, in colour, and it's got a pale yellow grain. It's commonly used in furniture, construction work, and simple joinery. Okay, so it's one that you'll commonly see um, around the house in pieces of furniture. Scots pine, uh, very, very similar to red pine, uh, but tends to be more difficult to work with due to the knots that are involved. Okay, so it tends to have a lot more knots than red pine. Okay, so two similar types of trees, they're grown in different areas of the world, and Scots pine tends to have more knots, um, which makes it a bit more difficult to work with. It's paler in colour uh, to red pine, um, and is often used in joinery work. So you can see here uh, the sort of beams for the roof of a new built house, uh, general joinery work, things like that, you'll see it's often Scots pine that is used. Cedar is another example of softwood. It's very durable outdoors. Um, it's easy to work with, but not overly strong. Okay. Uh, reddish orange colour uh, with distinctive rings. Okay, we spoke about that earlier when we looked at um, if you talk about looking at a tree stump, you'd see the rings. So, <coughs> excuse me, cedar tends to have very distinctive rings. Uh, often used in outdoor pursuits, so garden fencing, sheds, furniture, tables, benches, that kind of thing, uh, because of its durability in outdoor environments. Spruce is another softwood. Um, it's a very strong softwood. It's resistant to splitting, so it's less likely to split as we work with it. Uh, as we tend to chisel and saw from it, it's less likely to split. Uh, it's pale white in colour, it has small knots, um, which again adds to the fact that this will be easier to work with uh, than some other timbers. It's generally used for indoor furniture. And finally, we have Douglas fir. Uh, it's again a durable softwood with good workability, it's easy to work with. Uh, it has a very pronounced grain, okay, it's a yellow to red to brown colour. Uh, but the grain is quite distinctive. The grain tends to stand out against the rest of the timber, which adds to the aesthetic appeal. Uh, and because of that, it's commonly used in furniture. Okay. And finally, we have manufactured boards. So coming not from trees, uh, but from the pulps, chips, blocks, or stripped, any sort of waste material from natural timbers. Okay. So they're generally inexpensive because they're made from material that's otherwise going to go to waste anyway. So in large environments and in, in workshops, all the scrap material that isn't used tends to be collected and is then recycled and repurposed as manufactured boards. So that tends to uh, lower the price and also is good for the environment because the wood um, is not going to waste. It's available in large sheets because it is man-made. Uh, we can make it in sheets that are much larger than we could ever get uh, from a tree. So there's an advantage to using man-made uh, manufactured boards in that instance, uh, which can lead to flat, very even surfaces which don't twist or warp. And we'll talk about that shortly when we look at the disadvantages of woods and what twisting and warping actually refers to. 
again, we've got a table here of some examples. Um, plywood. Uh, sometimes we will use this in the workshop. Uh, for those who have done some workshop activities, the scrap piece of material that we tend to keep down the side of our bench that we use when we're chiselling or if we want to clamp uh, a piece of work to the bench, that piece of scrap material that we keep in our benches is plywood. And you might recognise it here from the picture. So it's very strong material uh, and it's made up with uh, very thin layers of wood that are glued together at 90 degrees. Um, so in the first layer, the grain would be running top to bottom. The second layer, the grain would be running left to right. And then the layer after that would be top to bottom. And then the layer after that would be left to right. And so on and so on. And they just continue to layer the wood, uh, changing the direction of the grain each time to increase the strength of the material. Uh, and again, this is commonly used in furniture, cabinets, uh, worktops, and that kind of thing. Blockboard is a manufactured board that we don't see very often, um, but does exist and does have its uses. Uh, very strong and stable, it's resistant to bending. It tends to have a veneered top and base. Now we'll come across this word again. A veneer is just a thin layer of wood. Okay, a veneer is just a thin layer of wood. Um, sometimes veneers can be made of plastic, uh, but in this case it is wood. Um, so it's a, a thin veneer, thin layer of wood on the top, a thin layer of wood on the bottom, and then larger blocks in between. And again, these larger blocks are glued together with the grains running in opposite directions to add to the strength of the material. And it tends to be used for heavier duty purposes, so in building construction and things like heavy duty shelving. Not one we see very often, uh, but still one that's important to, to know about. Veneered chipboard is one that you might be very used to seeing, particularly if you've ever helped build any flat pack furniture from somewhere like Ikea, for example. Chipboard tends to be very popular uh, in that kind of environment. Um, so it's compressed chips of wood uh, that are glued together. So they're sort of pressed together with heat, glued together uh, to make that board material, that sheet material. And it's very common in low cost furniture. Okay, very common in flat pack furniture. Um, so if you've ever uh, been in IKEA or you've ever helped to put together some IKEA furniture, chances are you have worked with chipboard. MDF is another um, manufactured board which is very stiff, uh, stable, it's easy to cut. However, the dust is very harmful to inhale, which is why in the workshop uh, we tend not to use MDF on the belt sander. And any time that we might be might have to use MDF on the belt sander, we would wear a dust mask. Uh, due to the glue that is used to produce MDF, it's harmful to inhale uh, the dust that comes off that, and therefore we would definitely be wearing a mask uh, if we were to be sanding this on the belt sander. So it's fibres uh, that are pressed together and, um, with glue, as I mentioned, and it produces a very smooth surface texture. And again, tends to be used in low-cost furniture, worktops, that kind of thing. Hardboard. Is the final one we'll look at today, which is a very soft um, manufactured board, it bends very easily. Um, again, its fibres are pressed together. One surface tends to be quite smooth, and the other one is a bit furry. Now, chances are you have come across hardboard before. It tends to be the thing that is used on the back of photo frames. Uh, so, if you've got a photo in the house, you have a look at the back. Uh, the thing that holds the photo in will tend to be hardboard. Okay, it's very thin. And not very strong, it will have one smooth side and one sort of furry side. Another use for hardboard is maybe um, on the bottom of drawers, okay, drawers that are not intended to hold uh, heavier items. Sometimes hardboards are used for the base uh, of a drawer. So why might we want to use wood? Why might we choose to use wood over a different material? Uh, you, wood has a unique aesthetic, okay, particularly natural timbers. When we're looking at the, the grain patterns of woods, and we've discussed those there with the softwoods and hardwoods, um, they tend to have you know, a unique appeal to them that some other materials just won't have. They tend to give the impression that the product has been handcrafted, um, which would lead the customer to think that there's a degree of skill and quality and care that's been taken into manufacturing that product. Um, which some people will find appealing. 
And as we mentioned already, it's a sustainable material because trees can be replanted. Okay, there's no restriction in that sense. It's recyclable and reusable, so any wood that goes to waste um, can be scrapped down and turned into manufactured boards. And then manufactured boards at the end of their life, um, some of those can also be recycled as well. So we can see a picture here of some various products. Uh, and the appeal here, the, the grain pattern of this particular piece of timber, it'd be very hard to recreate that um, in other materials. So the aesthetic appeal of natural timbers can appeal to a lot of people. Um, this is the Forestry um, Commission logo. And when we see this logo um, on our timber, we know that it's been sourced from a responsible location, uh, from a forest that is responsibly managed uh, where they're replanting the trees that they cut down. So you might tend to see this uh, on paper products. Sometimes you might even see it on your, your toilet roll, that kind of thing. It tells you that the the wood that has been used for that particular product has been sourced responsibly. Disadvantages of woods, um, they're not all, not all great. They usually require a finish to protect and waterproof them. So some woods will do well outdoors without a finish, uh, but most will require some sort of varnish or paint uh, or other additive surface to protect it from the, the environment. And doing that will cost you time and cost you money. You have to obviously go out and buy the finish. Then you have to take the time to apply this finish to your timber. Um, so in some cases, that might be a disadvantage where other materials, um, such as plastics, don't require a finish um, in order to waterproof them. So there's an issue there. Woods are liable to splitting, twisting and warping. And this is more so with natural timbers uh, than man-made timbers. And we can see here in this bottom right-hand image, you can see that this particular piece of timber has split. So as wood gets older or if it rots, um, if it hasn't been protected, if it hasn't had a uh, protective coating applied, and water gets into the timber, it can tend to rot and uh, split away. Timber that has been left uh, for a long time uh, will twist and will warp, so it will start to change shape and bend um, due to changes in air pressure and temperature, um, which can sometimes mean that that particular piece of timber is unusable. It's too out of shape for us to use anymore. Um, so that's something that needs to be considered. Um, because it can be a particular disadvantage. So to recap, we have three categories of timber. Two of them are natural timbers, hardwoods and softwoods. Okay, and these are the two that we get straight away from trees. Manufacture boards are a third category and they are man-made from the waste materials of natural timbers. Okay, we know that wood is a natural and unique material. We now know that the lines that we see on natural pieces of timber are the grain. These dark circles are knots. They're quite hard, they're difficult to work with and they show where a branch once grew. Uh, if you want to have a look over this PowerPoint, there'll be a link to the relevant page on the department website below this video, as well as links to the practical woodwork and design and manufacture pages on the website as well, if you want to go over other theory areas uh, for the courses that you are studying.